Hello, so today I'm joined by Stuart Wheaton, who is a senior LCM examiner. I'm going to be putting some questions to him about uh, the LCM rock guitar syllabus, uh, the kind of questions that just come up regularly. So I thought I'd put them over to Stuart. So hello again, Stuart. Thanks for taking the chat. All right. Um, I'll jump straight in with the questions about the rock guitar syllabus by asking uh, about free choice pieces. So could you clarify which grade uh, free choice pieces become an option for the rock guitar syllabus? And does that differ for recorded exams? If you could perhaps sort of clarify some of that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for the recorded exams um, from from grade one up to a yes, you can um, use use pieces from other accredited boards. Um, right. So you might want to use some of the other boards um, pieces. That's fine, uh, as well as um, the LCM uh, uh, books. So um, so you can you have that option for recorded um, for the face to face um, and online exams there. You have to um, for grades one to three. Yeah, you have to use um, the pieces that are in the um, the guitar solos books, the Hal Leonard yeah, books. OK. And then from grade four. Um, yeah, you can then start to use alternate pieces. Um, so from grade four to eight, yeah, you can swap those pieces out for, for any piece um, you feel is at the appropriate level. Yeah, we've put a list together. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. we've put a little list together. So um, basically, um, we'll put that in the, I don't know, in the comments section. Yes, that'd be useful. We'll video. do that. Okay. Um, so this has been a, a list that various other teachers have been involved with. Um, I can, can I share my screen with you? There we go. Um, so can you see that? I can indeed. Very good. Okay, cool. So yeah, for grade mm. four, we've, we've added in, um, so there's some a Zeppelin and some Deep Purple, oh, yeah. uh, some Queen songs, um, grade five, um, there's some, uh, Rival Sons, Wolfpack, um, the Eagles, grade nice. six. Um, yeah, some Gary Moore, Stevie Wonder, Grade 7, some Iron Maiden, a bit more Joe Satriani. Um, and um, there are some bits there for Grade 8 as well. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, that list is is an ever-expanding list. Yeah. So we're asking teachers and, and tutors as well to, you know, if they have their own um, ideas or if they've got pieces that they use as alternate pieces, then, uh, then let okay. us know and we'll, we'll add them onto the list. Okay, great. So that's kind of been put together by the tutors and people. It kind of, everybody sort of agrees is at the, the right level. So they're all, we'll make sure we've put that somewhere in the comments, but they're all sort of published and, and you know, we're, yeah. we're quite happy for people to use those in their exam. Yeah, yeah, and and the, where you get them from, really, um, a couple of tutors have have, um, have put in. Uh, I think it's www.guitarinstructor.com. Ah, okay. So that's um, Hal Leonard's site. Um, yeah. www.guitarinstructor.com. That site is really good because um, you can just get the the single pieces um, and just pay right. you know a few pounds or three pounds, um, yeah. and it uses all the main guitar parts. Um, you don't have to, and it's worth noting here as well. You don't have to use the, um, you don't have to do the solos. You can improvise yeah. one or just or just cut it out, um, and um, yeah, they can just you know okay. just leave solos for their own. Okay. Um, okay. Great. So that's, that's worth really having. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll make sure that list of value is that's really useful for people. I think that's, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sure. Uh, lovely. Okay. So uh, improvisation section for the rock exams. Could you just just clarify exactly what happens um, in terms of in the exam, the order of things and what you're expected uh, to be able to do as a candidate in the exam? Yeah, sure, sure. So this is always one that crops up. And, and yeah, they do get confused sometimes in the exams and, and, yes. and rightly so sometimes. So um, the recording is continuous. So basically, um, the, the chord sequence plays around five times. Mm. Um, the first one. You don't have to play at all. You just have to listen. And that is an eight bar sequence. OK, it then at the end of that eight bar sequence counts you in. So you'll hear a one, two, three, four. And then you solo for verse two and three. OK, so you've listened right. to verse one. It's counted you in. And then you do verse two and verse three as a solo. So you lead, do a lead solo. And then there is another four beat counting at the end of that third verse. It will say, switch to rhythm, one, two, three, four. 
And then you play the rhythm part. So you, you'll play the chords that are in front of you in the exam. Okay. And you have to do that for the final two verses. Okay. 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 So verse one is just a listen. You then get a count in. Verse two and three are the solo. Then it will say switch to rhythm. And then for verse four and five, you'll play those chords that are, okay. uh, that are written on the sequence. Yeah. Okay, okay. And that, that doesn't differ for recorded, does it? Of course, it's just the same. It's just that they're pre-prepared. Yeah. So you yeah. catch them prior to the exam, which is, you know, marked differently, of course. But yeah, it's the same format. Yeah. Same yeah. format. Yeah, so same format. Um, um, you know, one of these things that they also, um, that, that also stems from, uh, stems from this is, is the idea of pulse. So, um, and we find this as well, um, you know, when they're doing the accompaniment exams for acoustic and when they're doing the oral mm. tests and yeah. clapping along the pulse and all that kind of thing. Um, all this sort of results from just um, just understanding pulse and beat. So um, so it's a really good um, exercise to actually get them to listen to the backing tracks that they've got um, with the with the um, with the example versions in the rock books and, and just listen to the tracks. Um, yeah. so if I was playing one here, if I, if I basically just getting a pulse, um, is a really important thing. So yeah, if yeah. I were to on a little, if we were playing along to a, to a pulse, I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah. Go um, you got that? Cool. Um, this is a game that I do with my kids sometimes, and it's a really good one to, to just get, um, to get it into their sort of psyche a little bit and just so that they understand how to clap along to a basic pulse because yeah, yeah. the whole recording um when they're doing the the improvisation it's knowing what eight bars feels like and and being able to count and i think sometimes yeah. in the exams they're kind of guessing a bit <laughs> you know yeah, yeah absolutely impression. unless they get that one two you know they get that one two three four count in so i just got this little thing here so this is just <laughs> you can do this you can have this um, sort of on a bit of paper or on a blackboard when you're teaching or um, just write on a bit of paper. Really, really simple. And it's just getting the kids to count. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And do that first. Yeah, yeah. And then what we can do is just lob off one like that. So when we get to beat two, we're just going to not clap one. And you just take off beats as you go. All right, so yeah. you do four. See you. One, three, five, six. Exactly like that. Yeah. You can do it your own way, whatever you want to do. But um, that really, uh, you know, you can do that at the start of the lesson. You can get the click going and yeah. and just get yeah. just doing a little game. Just while they're you know while they're sort of you can sort of do it while you're tuning up their guitar or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they can they can have a little go at it. Um, you can get them to sort of count how many, you know, they can put in whatever number they want. You know, normally kids, yeah. they go, oh, let's do a thousand. Yeah, let's do a thousand, yeah. <laughs> let's do a thousand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, yeah, that's that's a good little game. And that, that kind of obviously feeds into um, what the question was about, you know, students getting confused with the improvisation. Yeah. But it, it is pulse nine times out of ten. Um, yeah, that, cool. that is the problem and just feeling that eight bar um that eight bar sequence um and getting used to that so it's a lot lot of listening um as well as you know learning to improvise and obviously play the chords i would say the pulse thing is actually like number one thing and, mm. and should be enforced with whatever you do um so that's a um that's a that's a really important thing yeah okay really important thing yeah, yeah, great. And, and that's going to help with acoustic exams accompaniment, of course, as well. The pulse is absolutely essential as well with that. Totally. Um, yeah. And of course, we're not we're not to a, a sort of a backing track with a click there. So yeah. kind of yeah. so kind of having that internal pulse is is, is vital. So, yeah, yeah. it fe feeds into a lot of the exams, really. OK. Um, yeah. The oral tests, clapping a time signature back. Yeah. yeah. OK. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. Really useful sort of practice tips. There. I like that one i'll definitely use that yes yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, really yeah. yeah it's good um so a bit more practically speaking in terms of the rock guitar grades uh, can you use an acoustic guitar for those grades 
Yep, yeah, up to grade two, I would say it's probably probably okay. Um, most of the grade, you know, step one to grade two material is kind of down in the first position yeah. or yeah, yeah. first four frets. I would say anything as soon as you start shifting up. So if you try and do all right now, the the solo on an acoustic guitar, yeah. you know, good luck. But it's really yeah. hard. So so um, so I would say yeah, definitely. Um, you, you can use electric all the way through. You can use acoustic, but I would say probably the stop point would be grade two yeah. um, for, for, for that because then because of the lead parts that are involved in it and moving up higher up the neck, it's going to make it more difficult. It's not going to show your student um, or yourself in the best light, really, um, yeah. if you're really struggling to play sort of, you know, on uh, 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 up, up, up the um, higher positions. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 because things like string bends, it's yeah, of course, it's going to just hold you back. Like you say, it's going to... Uh, give yeah. you an unfair, you know, yeah, you might as well use yeah. an electric one. Okay. Totally. Yeah, 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 totally. Really unfair disadvantage right from the off, which you, which yeah. you don't want, especially in the No, instance. absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, so that sort of leads on to then asking, can you use different guitars in your exam, you know, tunings and things like that, is that allowed? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, it has to be quite prompt, so what, yeah. what we... What we would advise is if you're doing sort of like if you're doing the higher grades and and you're sort of a real metal fan and you have a, a piece that's in drop C or something like that, then, yeah, yeah. then obviously have that guitar tuned before you even come into the exam room yes. and, you know, just give it a little tweak before you go in. Um, and then any little sort of minor final adjustments are absolutely fine in the exam room, but you don't want to be there going, oh, hang on a second, doom, 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 you know, and then, yeah, um, you know, take a, 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 an uh, inordinate amount of time to, to, to out of the exam time to, to tune it. Um, so little fine adjustments are fine, but as long as, yeah, as long as you, um, you have that second guitar in the tuning that you want it, or, you know, it might yeah. just be in standard um yeah absolutely fine to use another guitar yeah great okay that's good to know particularly useful for higher grades i think that isn't it um yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah. Um, all right so then moving on um amp and effects so are you allowed to use your own amp and effects in the exams yeah yeah of course yeah of course. um again um absolutely fine um i mean a lot of amps that, that we use for the exams um do have effects built into them but they might not sometimes yeah. so um so of course you know bring your own effects one thing we would say is just make sure um make sure you're quite you know how to plug in quite quickly mm. um make sure you know you might be running on a battery make sure that's charged if you've got a power connector make sure that's okay make sure your leads aren't you know scratchy mm. or um or anything like that um it's just good it's just good practice for you know yeah for, then you know move on to sort of you know play gigs in places so yeah. um it's a good sort of headspace to get into so um any issues with the candidate with the with your with your gear the examiner can't really help with if if it's you know if it's a thing that the, the you know oh you just haven't plugged in this bit then um, that, that's fine but um if it delays the exam then it it, it you mm. have to kind of really just put it to the side and just do it without the effects get on with it yeah. so but just make sure you you are in um, charge of your own sort of gear. Um, so just we, we would like to make that you know clear, um, mm. so that when they go in, um, they know exactly how to you know plug in and everything like that. And the examiner yeah. really can't mm. uh, you know get a screwdriver out and start start tinkering. Quite right. Things. Yeah. The, yeah. But I like what you say about it being a sort of it's like preparing people for real life and playing gigs and things like that, and then. You know a situation as we've talked about you know you just yeah. kind of have to get on with it and it's not anybody else's to an extent you know in the real world sort of anybody else's responsibility it's what we're trying to kind of yeah. teach, i suppose yeah yeah that's what we're trying to sort of encourage and you know um you know if, if the effect really is needed for the song then that's fine yeah. um you know if you if you can get away with you know if a lot of your songs are kind of clean and just distortion generally you won't, won't really need a a, a yeah. pedal as such but only if the you know if the song calls for it then obviously you know use it cool. um but yeah 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 try and try and get into the habit of just knowing how to you know fix your gear and make sure your gears in working order yeah that's right <laughs> yeah yeah of course have backups always have backups if you can always have backups. batteries and leads <laughs> and all that yeah definitely um good okay so um yeah sort of with, with on on the trail of uh things going wrong but i suppose similar answer but what would happen if you're in your exam and you break a string, what do you do? 
<laughs> yeah, um, yeah, try, yeah, tr try not to cry, and then yes. basically, see, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, try, um, try and carry on, try and carry on through the song if it's happening through the song, and then um, it depends. I mean, you know, if if you or I, Charlie, we're, we're examining someone who's quite a young student. Yeah. Um, you know, just doing their first grades, um, and you could tell they were, you know, they were upset about it or something. And then we'd, we'd we'd find a way we could, you know, they could yeah. use our guitar or, you know, we'd we'd just kind of tune it up if we could see if it was on the top string and they weren't really using the top string for those those yeah. pieces that were playing. Then we can get around it. Um, it, older students, yeah, you you um, really just try and re, you know retune after that after that tune and then. Mm. Um, see if you can get through it or, or, you know, if you're very quick with changing strings, then go for it. But it is another sort of a bit of a real life situation, isn't it? Mm. With, with yeah. regards to, you know, gear going wrong. It, it does happen. Um, you know, it, it can happen in exams. I've, I've never had it. I must admit, I don't know if you have, but, um, I've never... touch wood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, it can happen, of course. So mm. the the main thing, the main advice is to just try and carry on if it's happening through a song, um, and then um, either will you know if it's a young student that that um, you know it's going to really affect them, then we can you know pass a guitar over to them if needs be, yeah. um, or just tune help them to tune again, and then uh, and then they can get through that hopefully without that you know if it's the top E string and they're not, they're not really using it, then we'll we'll get around it um, okay. somehow. <laughs> yeah again always have spares and you know be well versed in changing your strings worst case scenario i suppose is a good lesson anyway isn't it um, it is, so yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah it is and just you know just being able to change a string um yeah it's just one of those you know being able to tune your guitar being able to you know yeah um yeah. use your amp use your effects all those kind of things um yeah. that come with being an electric guitarist is um yeah it's just one of those things so uh, yeah yeah Brilliant. All right. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to mention, Stu? Any other sort of ideas or tips or anything like that? I think we sort of covered everything. Was there any other points? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, um, the early years, I think we did have a question about the sort of, um, you know, alternative pieces. Well, not so much alternative pieces, but just pieces for students to learn. Oh. Um, step one and step two. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, you can use sort of, um, pieces from other regulated boards for, for the for the recorded exams but just yeah. in terms of supplementary material I think um, you know what what do you do with the sort of early rock um, yeah. guitarists that are doing the step one and two books so um, I mean one of the things I, I found I always found the um, the surf guitar stuff really good so oh, things right. like things like rumble oh, um, yeah. or link ray which yeah, is just yeah. that um, that's that a good one in, yeah, uh, that's a really good one. What would you say? Uh, step, mm, step. Maybe two, step probably. two, because I think I yeah. think there's a B seven in there. Yeah, but it's, it's kind there of is. mainly on the first three frets, and it kind of sits quite quite nicely for the fingers, and it, it sounds quite cool. And it's yeah. just that kind of like you know rough sort of sounding sort of surf guitar stuff. So there's one. quite a lot of those surf guitar pieces. Sea Jam Blues. I mean, it's only two notes. Oh, right. It's kind of a jazz standard. So the, the oh, famous right. okay. one, yeah, was uh, Oscar Peterson. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking of. But okay, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's got kind of like a twiddly middle section, but you can sort of, you know, make a little arrangement out of that. Um, okay, okay. James cool. Bond theme, although it's not yeah. a rock guitar. That's a good but, one. Yeah, Rebel Rouser. That's another sort of. Oh yeah, thing, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, have a look at the yeah. Um, I I okay. kind of tend to use a few of the surf guitar-y tunes that are yeah. quite because they, they all tend to be on the sort of low strings because they're all that sort of low twangy, cool. sort of cowboy kind of thing going on. Yeah. So um, yeah, those those tunes can be quite good um, for the early ones to 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 get a handle on. Okay. Um, it is hard. It's quite tricky to find material that early grade. Yeah, I think so, it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, because yeah, as soon as you choose a piece, there's always there might be one bit where there's like, oh, it's just one chord that they're just not going to be able to get a handle on. So yeah, um, so you have to throw it out the window. But yeah, those ones generally are, are, are pretty good. Okay. Um, I've got this um, book, which was um, uh, I think you can still get it. It's um, classic guitar. Okay. So how learned, So it's classic guitar instrumentals. I will link <laughs> so to that. That's handy. Yeah, so there's a yeah, and pop a link onto that. It's on sort of music room and uh, yeah. Amazon and things. Um, but it's got all yeah, it's got Rumble on, uh, Wipeout, yeah. Safaris, 
a raunchy ramrod pipeline. Mm. Um, quite a few, yeah, quite a few really good sort of instrumental tunes. Um, some of them are quite tricky, but there, there's a couple in there that, that would fit the early grades, but there's some high grade stuff in there as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's worth, worth having a look at that one. And it's okay. one that can kind of, um, dip quite a lot, you know, you can use quite a lot of the material in there. So it's not one of those mm. ones where you get the book and then you only use one song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really, yeah, well, that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah that's really good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's good just yeah. for them to have that repertoire to, to learn, isn't it? I think as well, you know, kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I think that's, that's, that's all our questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> great. Great. Um, Love to yeah. see you. Good to see you, Stuart. Thanks for, for helping us out and um, we'll talk again soon. Cheers. Yeah, we'll do. All right. Cheers, Charlie. See you, mate. Bye. Bye.